I sincerely welcome everyone to our Purna festival. I'm very, very grateful to have this opportunity to speak some words tonight as a service to this large gathering of wonderful souls. The topic is being a true friend. Oftentimes in life, we think we have good friends until Providence puts us in a situation where we find he's either an enemy <laughs> or he's just not there when I need him the most. According to the values we have in our life, there are different conceptions of what a friend is. To some people, a friend is someone I play cards with, <laughs> go to the cinema with, or maybe even go to the restaurant with and, and drink uh, intoxications and then talk whatever comes out of our minds. To some people a friend is that we share our interest in cricket <laughs> or uh, racing cars or Finding girlfriends. <laughs> You're laughing. But in most of the world, this is what friendship is about. Or somebody, when I'm having anxiety, I could just dump my mind out to and he'll listen to me. And then when I have anxiety, I'll dump my mind out to him and he'll listen to me. But then we find out he told so many other people. <laughs> it's actually quite rare to maintain a friendship over a period of long duration in this world. Because essentially conditioned souls think in terms of janasya mohoya mahamameti I and mine. I am this body. I am the particular designations of this body. I have my desires, my passions, I and mine. Essentially, what gives me enjoyment is priority. And if someone facilitates or assists my selfish enjoyment, that is a friend. But if that same person creates an impediment in my enjoyment, then they're no longer a friend. I move on to find somebody else, someone more enlightened from my perception of reality. But from a spiritual perspective, Friends are those who are willing to rise to a higher level 
beyond our own tastes, beyond our own inclinations, beyond our mood swings, beyond the fickle, restless nature of the mind and senses and the ego, and are really there to serve each other. From a spiritual perspective, Jivira Swarupoy Krishnera Nityadas, we are all servants of the Lord. And because every living being is a part of the Lord, we are servants. So many times we're so interested in, in somebody being my friend. But from a spiritual perspective, it's more important to be a friend to that other person. If both people have that consciousness to be a friend, there is a very, very deep spiritual relationship. If the purpose of life is sense gratification, then having friends on all of these various levels we have been talking about makes good sense. But the Bhagavatam says, Nayam, what is that verse? Nayam deho deha bhajamna loke kastan karman arhati vid bhujamje tepo divyam putra kayena satvam sudyadhyasyam brahma sokyam dvananta that sense gratification is available to the animals. Human life begins when we are willing to perform tapasya for the purpose of self-realization. Tapasya means selfless activities for a higher goal. So when we understand that the goal of life is to go beyond birth and death and the sufferings of the body and mind, the sufferings of natural conditions, the sufferings caused by other living entities, and to understand our relationship with God and fulfill the real need of the heart, which is to love, the origin of that necessity for love is the soul's love for God. On the spiritual platform, it's the only real happiness. Without that, the body, the mind, they will have some flickering pleasure, some flickering anxieties in various relationships and so forth, but the soul is starving. So real friendship, true friendship, is when we can help each other to realize that ecstatic love within our own hearts and thus transcend birth and transcend death. And when we establish our friendship on that platform, in a mood of servitude, then we rise above all the dualities and all the phenomena that's stirring on this worldly plane. And that is a true friend. There are many examples. Vidura. Vidura was a real friend to Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was, due to the influence of his son, committing horrible karmic activities. He was acting immorally, unethically, 
Dhritarashtra thought that Duryodhana was his friend. <laughs> because Duryodhana was giving him sense gratification. Duryodhana was, was his son and was justifying Dhritarashtra to be the king or the father of the king. Yes? Dhritarashtra was sitting on the throne and Dura, Duryodhana was ruling the kingdom under him. So Duryodhana was giving him something, honor, prestige, power. Vidura was telling him the truth. The kingdom belongs to the Pandavas. Give to them. They are pure devotees of Krishna. If you destroy them, you will if you try to destroy them, you will destroy yourself. In the most palatable possible way, Vidura was trying to tell Dhritarashtra the truth. Because he loved him. Because he cared about him. But not only Dhritarashtra would not listen, but under the influence of his son, he, he, Vidura was blasphemed. Dhritarashtra didn't say a word about it. Dhritarashtra, Vidura was banished from the kingdom. He lost his wife, his family, his home, his property, his everything. Why? Because out of love, he was trying to be honest and save his friend. And Dhritarashtra went right along with Duryodhana in banishing Vidura. But Vidura kept trying to help no matter what. <laughs> and in the end, after the battle of Kurukshetra, when everything Vidura said came true, Dhritarashtra was living a miserable life. Just carrying on trying to enjoy comforts under Yudhisthira, who he tried to kill, who he banished. Vidura came all the way back to Hastinapur as a friend to tell Dhritarashtra, look at what you have done. Look at you. You should leave this place with me to free yourself of all of your immense mountains of sins. and to realize God. It took Dhritarashtra losing all of his sons and everything before he could hear the words of Vidura. But he did hear them. And Vidura took him to the forest and taught him the process of self-realization and yoga so the Dhritarashtra attained liberation. If Vidura did not come back to save him, Dhritarashtra would have miserably suffered birth after birth after birth. What a friend Vidura was. He was getting no sense gratification. He could have just kept, he could have enjoyed immense sense gratification at home if he just kept his mouth shut. But he could not tolerate seeing someone he loved going so far in the wrong direction and incriminating himself in so much future suffering and offenses against God and the devotees. 
So Vidura, the qualities of his friendship were tolerance, forgiveness, and personal self-sacrifice. And they were all based on love, on real care. Prahlad Maharaj was also such a friend. His father was not only materialistic, he was constantly drunk. He was cruel, he was murderous, he was irreligious, he was against God. And every time Prahlad talked to him with utmost respect and affection, folded palms, he would speak the truth to his father. And his father hated hearing it. And actually, Prahlad spoke in the most palatable possible ways. Jai Shri Shri Radha Gopina. As a result, Hiranyakashipu tried to kill Prahlad in every way that became his obsession in life to murder his son. And after Lord Narasimhadev delivered, after Lord Narasimhadev rid the world of Hiranyakashipu, Prahlad was offered a benediction. What did he ask for? He didn't ask anything for himself, nothing. He asked, please give liberation to my father. Give him your mercy. Such a friend. Cheap friendship is just getting along to just enjoy life in various ways and be there for each other on that level. But real friendship is really concerned for the soul, for the body, the mind, and the soul. We have seen in just the circles of devotees when our Stoka Krishna Prabhu was dying of cancer. Such wonderful friendship. Devotees were taking so much time out of their own lives just to be there, to chant for him, to read for him, to help him remember Krishna. Nothing for themselves. We've had devotees who've had, you know, serious heart problems and requiring surgeries. And no one was ordered to, but devotees just spontaneously came forward to raise funds for the surgery, to cook for the family, to chant and make everyone feel closer to God in the situation and supported. And some of those families that went through that said, our own relatives did not extend themselves so much. Krishna tells in Gita, Sura the Saravadehinam, that I am the best well-wishing friend of all living beings. What does it mean to be Krishna conscious? In essence, it means to be an instrument of Krishna's love in our life, in whatever relationships we may have. How is Krishna's friendship, the supreme friend, a friend in need is a friend indeed, 
And what is our greatest time of need? The time of death. Who can save us at the time of death? One of our devotees, he joined the Brahmachari ashram. Family was furious. Furious. She was the only son. <laughs> and it was his choice. In our ashram, no one is told you should join the ashram. The ashram is there for those who really want a very, very serious life of a sadhu, but it has to be their choice. We, we just as much encourage people to be exemplary grihastas. And perhaps 80% choose to be exemplary grihastas, if not more. Well, this person was determined. He wanted to be a sadhu. He, was, he had a very high-paying managerial job and just decided on his own. So his parents, very disturbed. Do you like this story? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> so one day they came to me. Father, mother, and uncle. And the mother was weeping uncontrollably. And the father, not uncontrollably, but she was weeping. <laughs> I'm sorry, I exaggerated. She was weeping. And the father was angry, and the uncle was burning hot. <laughs> Why are you stealing our son? said, if your son wants to come home and get married, I will give him all support. But your son, he wants to follow in the footsteps of the greatest saints in history. Shankaracharya left his widowed mother, and she cried when he took sannyas. But look what he's done. Sripad Madhvacharya. He left home at 11 years old. His mother and father were brokenhearted. They were angry as fire. When he was 12, he took sannyas. But look what he's done to the, look what he has done for the world. Ramanujacharya. He also left home very young. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was 24 years old, he gave up so much, the most loving young wife, the most loving widowed mother. But look what they have done. They have given spiritual enlightenment, love of God, to hundreds of millions of people over centuries. Your son wants to follow in the footsteps of these men. Honestly, earnestly, sincerely. Out of his own free will. Who am I to stand before God and stop him? And who are you to stand before God and stop him? You'll see, someday, you'll be so proud of him. The uncle especially was very angry, very angry. <laughs> but he didn't have any arguments against that so much. Very soon after, in a year or two. The uncle got cancer. He 
was dying real fast. This son from the ashram was at his bedside every day reading Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, gave him chanting beads. His uncle was chanting. This went on as far as I remember for many weeks. I went to visit the uncle. He was completely bedridden. He was in his last days. It was the first time I saw him since he was in good health and he was very angry on me. And very angry on his nephew also. When I walked in the room, he was crying in happiness. He said, my nephew is the best friend I've ever had in my life. In fact, I accept him as my guru. <clears throat> I am going to die any day. And there is nothing anybody in my family can do to help me except cry. And what good does that do? <laughs> how is that helping me? They're just asking, how do you feel? And they're crying, how do you feel? And how we miss you? And What's that doing? He said, my nephew comes more than anybody else. And he's given me the understanding that I'm the eternal soul, that I'm beyond death. And he's given me the holy name, and he's taught me how to chant the holy name, and he's teaching me Bhagavad Gita. And now I have no fear of death. I feel joyful because I've understood the goal of life. Not only is he my best friend in life, but I accept him as my guru. Because at the time of my greatest need, he has come with the grace, with the knowledge, and with the ability to save me. This is real love. Recently, just a couple of weeks ago actually, I visited the parents of one of our brahmacharis. And they're just blissfully into Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and I was just remembering some years before, they were in my room crying. What has happened to our son? Now they're saying, we owe everything good in our life to our son. He's our guru. <laughs> He's our best friend. We wasted our whole life until we understood what he was telling us. Such friendship. Friendship is based on the spirit of sacrifice as an expression of love for the welfare of others. And that friendship has its fullest, deepest, and realest experience when it's centered around our true relationships with God or Krishna. A more superficial example that I have often given. Shortly after I came to this particular movement, 
I, was give, I, I had a service of milking cows. And the person I was supposed to milk cows with, because we did two people for each cow, because cows have, their udders have four parts, so I would be on one side going <laughs> and he'd be on the other side going <laughs> like that. And not only did we milk the cows together, but we brushed the cows together, we herded the cows in the fields together, we cleaned the goshala together, we shoveled the cow dung together. It was ready. But there was a problem. He didn't like me at all. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I remember thinking at least 20 times every day, if I didn't have to do this service with him, I would have nothing to do with this man. Throughout my life, this is just the kind of person that I would have nothing to do with. He's just completely opposite what I am. We have nothing in common except shoveling cow dung. <laughs> and I knew that he was thinking exactly the same thing of me and probably with many more graphic adjectives. <laughs> but somehow or other, for the service of Krishna and, just, and the cows, we just realized that we have to go above all of our cultural differences, our mental conditioning differences, our taste differences, our ego differences. There was nothing we had in common except that we were there for Prabhupada and Krishna to do something together. That was the only thing we had in common. We didn't even like the same prasad. <laughs> Some things, but... But somehow or other, we both decided that for the higher purpose of pleasing God, serving God, and helping our guru, we're going to tolerate each other and try, and in one sense, as time was going on, we came to realize what a blessing it was that we didn't like each other. How is that a blessing? You have to spend the whole day, almost every day, with someone you don't like? The blessing was, in order for us to find meaning in this relationship, we had to, to unite on a higher platform. The, pl the platform of devotional service, service to God. Prabhupada said, you can show your love for me by how you could cooperate. Do you know, in just a matter of a couple months, we became best friends from the core of our hearts. <clears throat> and we remained best friends for the next 25 years until he recently departed from this world. We became lifelong friends. And at that point, we didn't even notice our differences. There weren't any differences. <clears throat> we loved each other dearly. We'd do anything for each other. Anything he did good, I was just so proud of. And anything I did good, he was so proud of. There was love. That love came from uniting on a spiritual platform. That's 
what real friendship is. Real friends never become envious of each other. A real friend takes joy in the success of the other and takes pain in the failures of the other. Because envy is based on egoistic selfishness. That's all. No one is envious unless they're really selfish. They're thinking about me. Yes? I want fame, and I can't stand that this person's getting more recognition than me. I want success, and I can't tolerate that this person is gaining more than me. A real friend, the more the friend excels, the happier we become, the prouder we become. We want to speak about the wonderful things that our friend is doing. Yes? That type of friendship, which is based on serving God through each other, is immune and transcendental to the effects of Kali Yuga. <clears throat> Kali means the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. Husband and wife should be that type of friendship. Parents, children, that type of friendship. And friends, that's real friendship. In life and in death. Krishna can save us from death. And if we are instruments of Krishna's love, then we can also be real friends. Goranga Prabhu reminded me of one story. On a relative platform, there was a big mafia boss in Chicago. I'm sure you're all very interested now. <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam, Prahlad, Vidura. Those are very divine topics. But this is coming closer to home. <laughs> Especially for me, because I was born and raised in Chicago. <laughs> and this was the time of the biggest mobsters and gangsters. And this one big gangster, he was killing, he was bootlegging, that's when alcohol was illegal, and producing and selling alcohol was a federal crime. The good old days, you may say. <laughs> <laughs> and because there was so much money in doing, there's so much money in doing illegal things, it's always been like that. Yes? That's why people who deal produce and deal with illegal things. There's so much money in it. If there's a competitor, they kill each other. So much of the killings and deaths are between different gangs who are um, infringing on other people's profits. <clears throat> and of course the government. So this man was doing prostitution, bootlegging, producing alcohol when it was illegal. He was insurance. You've heard of insurance? Well, for them, insurance, very, it's a very simple policy. They go into your store and say, give us $150 a month insurance and we'll make sure that your store doesn't get bombed. <laughs> 
but if you don't pay us this insurance policy, we'll make sure your store is bombed. Very simple. And these poor store owners, they're just... <laughs> and once you tell them that, if they don't pay, you have to bomb their store. Because you have to set the example. <laughs> Nobody else will believe you unless you set the example. And they even say, they're not, I'm a nice person. Listen, I don't want to hurt you. But if I don't bomb your store, then nobody else will pay me. <laughs> so nothing personal, it's just business. <laughs> I told you this would be more home. Yeah? So, <laughs> so this gangster, he kept out of jail because he had such a brilliant attorney. You call them lawyers in India or advocates? He was a lawyer. He was a fantastic lawyer. His name was Easy Eddie. That's an American name. <laughs> <laughs> and no matter what this gangster did, Easy Eddie just twisted the law in so many ways and got him out of every trial. Trial after trial, he was always found innocent. So this gangster was giving huge amounts of money to Easy Eddie, because he was very wealthy. And he had practically a city block as his estate, this lawyer, in a beautiful house. He had a son. That son, he gave him, as soon as he was 16 years old, to get a driver's license. He got brand new, fast car. Any place he wanted to go, in days when there was practically nobody, he, he would give vacations anywhere he wanted, best possible clothes, so many pairs of shoes. He gave him everything. Because of his connection, he could get him in any university he wanted to. But as time went on, he saw that his son was, very, was not happy. And Easy Eddie was thinking, I've given my son everything. I've given him Anything he wants to enjoy, any place he wants to go, anything he wants to possess, I've given it to him. But there's one thing I have not given to him. A father that he could respect and be proud of. A father that he could look up to with pride. a father who has dignity and integrity. And this was burning his heart away. And ultimately, out of his love for his son, he came to the realization, the only way that I can ever give my son that is to testify what I know about these gangsters. If I do that, I will definitely be killed.